Well, hello and welcome to the Edgewood 4G podcast. My name is Kyle Parks and I'm the discipleship pastor here at Edgewood. And here at Edgewood, we gather, grow, give, and go with the gospel. And I have my brother here, Aaron Langworthy, well, brother in Christ. And uh, he's joining us here today. Aaron, you've been a part of Edgewood for how many years now? Almost as long as you. So oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't okay. too much longer. Yeah, you guys yeah. came in a little bit after yeah. we did. So Very good, very good. Well, Aaron's going to share with us a little about the ministry that they are raising support for. Um, but before we get into that, you know, I realized today, Aaron, is September 11th. And so looking back, September 11th, 2001, that's what, 23 years? Is that correct? If I can do math. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we think about this day, and uh, man, that was a, a day I think we all remember. You know, for me, I believe I was in 10th grade. English class. I didn't know what the Twin Towers were. I didn't know a lot about a lot of things, I don't think, at that time. But people came in and talking about this terrorist attack. We started watching the video, the buildings come down. Like, we went to Christian school, so, you know, we were all praying. We didn't do class for the rest of the day, but it was just one of those days that I just, I'll never forget. And, uh, man, it's, it's crazy that it's that, you know, now 23 years later, but yeah, I still remember it like it was yesterday. So what about yeah. for you? Where were you? Um, a little bit older than you. Yes. And uh, so I was in college. <laughs> okay. And um, I was actually in a class that was being taught by a guy who used to be in the Secret Service. Oh. And so he gets a phone call no during class. And um, and we're like, what's going on? I wonder if he you know, heard before normally, like other people. Doesn't normally, uh, you know, take phone calls yeah. while he's teaching. Right. Um, and then he comes back. He tells us um, what what, uh, what happened. And, um, uh, I know at, at some point during that day, we, you know, they, they ended classes early. I went back home and watched it on TV with my wife, um, when the second tower fell. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So wait, yeah. you were married at that point? I was. Yeah. Oh my word. Was, wow. You are a lot older yeah. than me. <laughs> or you just got married really young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my word. Well, thanks for coming on, Aaron. I appreciate it, man. Um, so Aaron and I have known each other for a while now. Uh, he helps lead the Mainspring Young Adults Ministry. He's been a leader in there for several years now. He leads the Sunday morning growth group for Mainspring. So I appreciate him as a brother in Christ, just just living on behalf of others and serving and teaching others. And then also his family a couple of years ago felt the call to start raising support to, to go to Uganda. And um, and it's been kind of a long road, but you guys are in that process. There's a lot changing now, some exciting things happening in y'all's and in, in your life. But you know, first off, before we get into some of that, just share a little bit more about yourself, um, just for those that might not know you guys. Sure. Um, so yeah, Aaron Langworthy. My wife is Amanda. I have six kids, five boys and one girl. Uh, my oldest is 25, and my youngest, the girl, is one. And so a pretty big spectrum there quite, of, uh, quite a of span. kids. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just have kids and, uh, and they keep you young, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so um, Grace is our youngest. Uh, she's been a blessing to have. My wife's excited. She finally finally got a girl. Yep. And um, um, my two oldest boys um, have turned into great godly men, and I pray the same for the rest of my young young kids that are heading over to Africa with me and my wife. Um, there's excitement, there's some nervousness, um, just new, new stuff. Um, so that's, that's our family. Yeah. We've been going here to Edgewood for, for quite a long time, um, six, seven years. And it's been a great place of healing yeah. and growth. Um, I love the staff here and, um, the family. And so we've, we've just enjoyed our time here. Good deal. Thanks for sharing, man. So you got to go on a vision trip a few months back. Yep. Uh, just yourself um, with some of the guys you'll be working with there in the future. And so talk to us about that, that opportunity to go to Uganda to finally see it in, in person. You had been talking about it, praying about it for a long time, and though you finally got to go. Um, just walk through the trip with us. What did you do there? Um, what kind of things did you guys work on? What did you learn? How did God open your eyes? Sure. Um, yeah, it has been a long a long process. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been years uh, since God sort of made the move in my heart to uh, to desire to go uh, into missions. And then there was COVID, then there was um, 
kids that we didn't expect to have <laughs> that we had. Change. And um, and so, uh, but just trusting God's timing in all of it. Uh, and so, uh, not I'm not the first guy that that God's ever given direction and then made wait. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty for you to see that often in the, in yeah. scripture. And so, uh, we were just being patient and letting God open the doors. And so, uh, f- finally got with. Um, the right organization and um, the right place. And so uh, Northern Uganda, right on the border of South Sudan, is where we're headed to um, to work with um, a ministry there called Reaching Africa's Unreached, mm-hmm. which reaches um, the Oringa people, the last unreached people group in Uganda um, that are native there, uh, as well as um, some other people groups like Sudanese um, who have crossed over the border. There's been right. a lot of civil war and problems. And so there's a huge refugee camp there. And then uh, the Mahdi people that are to the the east um, in the mountains. And the, so they're very geographically isolated. Mm. And so hearing things is one thing, but actually being able to see it and meet people, um, get a taste of the culture uh, is, is something totally different. And so, yeah, yeah um, Flying in there with a, a few other guys from ABWE who were there to um, do a week-long training uh, New Testament survey where you go through the sort of an overview of the whole New Testament with these guys who are pastors or training to be pastors in the area. And so got a, a taste of that. And then we visited the different areas um, that RAU really focuses in on. And so after my, my first day into uh, the Matu Mountains and seeing the Mahdi people there, um, believers in Mm. um, a shack of a church building, sticks and and metal roof and um, worshiping, praying. I don't understand any of it because it's in in a totally different language. And, um, but it was just a, an eye-opening experience and it was, I I heard this from some people I talked to who were the Belize trip and Mm -hmm. um, just a, a, an all-inspiring moment where you you realize that like God is is listening and watching and and intimately aware of all of that, mm. um, and that that his his children there are are as valuable to him there as they are in a, a well-known Western civilization. Yeah. Um, and so uh, those were my brothers and sisters, and it was a, it was a very sweet time being there, uh, getting. In, introductions and then we we went to um the Oringa people in the yumbe district and um, that is an area that's dominated by islam we met with some muslim cards some leaders and some other muslim um, teachers and uh got a taste of the city yeah. there um it was sweet to see the relationships that jacob had had built uh that have taken a decade a lot of love, and and uh, he's proven himself to really care about them. Yeah, he really focuses focuses on relation relationships there, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And um, so giving, uh, we we gave um, the the head guy there a large print Bible because he's kind of older, so he mm. needs to see. Yeah. Um, so he was happy to get this Bible, the study Bible. We gave some soccer balls that had scripture, uh, gospel verses all over yeah. it. And the kids play soccer is a really popular sport no surprise um, out there yeah yeah (laughs) and um we we got to see the area he was happy to show jacob his farm that he had been trying to implementing some of the farming techniques Mm -hmm. we got to pray for these guys um it was it was pretty incredible then they had had some um some problems they were talking about with their feet Mm -hmm. um and so jacob's wife carol has nursing experience and so she's like this sounds uh, like you you may have something going on with diabetes and oh, wow. and so we're taking them now we're driving around trying to find a place for them to be seen and get tested and then we're driving around trying to find um, medicine and all the while um, Jacob is you know pleading with them asking them like you you need to know Jesus yeah. um, and so he's he's been great um, he'll be a great example and mentor mm. while we're there he's not ashamed of the gospel and even in difficult situations um he's bold yeah and he's learned to balance well um, they do a lot of great things like wells and medical clinics and yeah dentistry the physical and, stuff. and the spiritual yeah needs. yeah he, he does a great job balancing those and um so we're 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 very blessed to be able to 
partner with them um, and look forward to one day. I know for, for them, they've been praying for people to come over um, and they know that their their time is limited to some mm. extent. They're in their mid-60s, how long they can stay there. And so they, they want to pass that baton yeah. off to someone else. And so um, they've been praying hard and they're excited that the our family and the and the prices, which is a family in South Carolina, are both looking to try to get there. Very good. Wow, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, and it sounds like uh, in a place like that, you know, relationships are huge, especially working with people from a completely different faith background. Um, but helping them with the physical needs that they have, but also understanding that your number one reason there is they need Jesus. Yeah. They need the gospel. That's the only thing that's going to truly truly help them in the long, long term. So, um, man, I'm so glad you got to go. And you also got to uh, do some teaching there uh, mm. with uh, kind of the Bible Institute uh, that's there. Talk a little bit more about that and, and kind of that opportunity. And you actually were able to witness that, but then I think you got to teach them as well. Is that a right? little bit, yeah. Um, they they have a, a curriculum that they go through. Uh, again, this New Testament um, survey class, ABWE has it. And so they've got helps for all the teachers. Mm-hmm. And they had multiple... Um, pastors that were there. And they brought them in from all over. Yep, yep, correct? yep, yeah. yeah. Um, most of them happened to be uh, from the Midwest kind of area, but um, one guy was actually a native of Uganda and had moved back to the States, and then he was back over again, um, and he's looking at working in southern Uganda, but he was part of the team. And uh, so, yeah, they had me jump in and help out with some introduction up to some lessons and stuff like that uh, just to get my feet wet and... Uh, so yeah, it was it was a joy. Uh, yeah. I learned a little bit of the language, just a little bit enough to say hi in um, the three different languages. <laughs> that's there, that's a start, man. Yeah, that's good. Um, so what do you see? You know, once you all are able to get there and get on the ground and get settled in, what do you see the ministry? Um, where do you see it going? Um, what do you think you all will be doing, kind of long term there? What What do you see God preparing you guys for as far as once you once you arrive? Hmm. Well, that's uh, that's an interesting question, and we'll see what actually happens because I can think through my life of all the things sure. that I thought God was going to do, <laughs> sure. and then yeah, God yeah. was like, "Well, I got different yeah. plans." So, um, I don't know if you've ever heard, like you know, you tell God your plans, and then He chuckles. Yep. And yep. Um, so, so for us, yeah, it would be helping uh, Jacob and Carol um, do more. They're they're limited with just them two and mm-hmm. some of the help they have there on site. Uh, it that might look like staying long term um in some of these places like the Yumbe district or mm-hmm. in the mountains um so that we get more time with the pastors and other leaders um my wife might be um helping disciple and and just come alongside some pastors wives um there there's a ton of kids in fact Uganda is the second youngest um country in the in the world mm. and the average age is 16 wow so there is a huge opportunity to work with children there. Um, the The main focus has been um, the pastors um, and, and other leaders, because we're hoping that, you know, those, those, if those guys can be equipped well, and they can know the Bible well, and then they can train that to the families in the church, then we can kind of see um, good spiritual discipleship happen, um, kind of through the ranks of the body. And, and so that has worked out well for for Jacob and Carol. They have additional plans, a uh, radio station they're hoping to okay. get up and going, uh, a medical clinic. Um, they, they've they become a, a bigger distributor of books um, than ever before. They, they do a lot already. And right now they're looking to raise um, some money to get some um, African study Bibles. Okay. Uh, so from Christian book distributor. And so they uh, they've raised about half of that. Uh, and they'll distribute that out to um, the churches in the area, as well as like people that come in from Sudan, giving in those resources so they can go back and be better equipped. So um, I'm sure taking some of those things and mm. and running with them, uh, really listening to Jacob. What do yeah. you What do you need us to do? Sure. Um, working with Ben and Sarah, the prices, and um, seeing what how our skills and how God's um, kind of taken us through life and what would be a best fit. So we're, we want to go in being really open, open-handed with, yeah. you know, we don't want to come with like, Hey, this is all the things we're going to do because um, 
we might be and probably will be surprised <laughs> sure. what God um, will call us to do while we're there. And um, so just be a help and, and help yeah. it continue. Yeah. Ultimately, get it into the hands of nationals one day uh, where they can right. they can continue to do what they're doing um, without external help and, and see the Oringa people reached um, for Christ. Yeah. And so you said you're going to be working with kind of different groups, people groups around there. Because cause didn't you say it's also just like a mile from the Su- Sudan border? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, South yeah. Sudan border, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Just how, yeah, how many different people and groups of people you all will be able to hopefully affect in, in your ministry there. So that's that's great. How long did it take you to get there? And what was like the process? Like, did you take multiple plane trips? Was there went on a, in a bus for any of that? Were you kind of off-roading? Because I know it's kind of out there in the middle of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the worst part was the 22-hour plane trip um, <laughs> from Chicago to, um, well, we stopped. Um, we, had, we had one layover, so we flew from okay. Chicago all the way over and um, into Addis Ababa, and then okay. flew from there to southern Uganda. Okay. Um, and so that's where their international airport is. Got it. And then from that, from that point, we we left with um, MAF, so their missionary um, airplanes that they provide. Mm-hmm. And so they they flew us from southern Uganda to the northern section with a couple stops along the way, but um, all okay. like clay dirt like runways wow. and, and um so that's how we got there that that flight was uh, an hour so it was enjoyable it's low and so you can kind of see down mm-hmm. see things and, and get a better idea of what the, the country is looking but the 22 hour one was um was that Gets was a little rough. cramped after that a while. was that was a long time to sit <laughs> i got you man uh, well, tell us some specifics of like where you guys are at with everything right now. Okay, so some stuff changed with your work recently, um, some stuff going on uh, with home, uh, you know, with, again, you have, uh, I guess she's not quite a baby anymore, but she's a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So stuff with the baby, Amanda, and then also where you guys like uh, financially speaking now and and as, as far as kind of that journey of, okay. of raising support. Well, my wife just had uh, knee surgery uh, a few weeks ago, and so she's recovering from that right now. Um, providentially, ABWE called us um, a little bit before that, probably uh, five weeks, and mm-hmm. said, hey, um, your support level is at enough, which is about 50% of our monthly need is what we have committed from uh, churches and individuals. And we have uh, over 100% of our um outfit and passage or one time mm-hmm. go buy a vehicle when you're there and, and get the stuff you have to get. Yeah. Um, so they said, based on where you're at, um, you can um, move away from working full time and, um, and focus more on missions preparation. Mm-hmm. And so that worked out perfectly with Amanda's surgery. Yeah. So that's allowed me to be uh, a little more at home and help her in the recovery because she has a bunch of kids that she has to take care of. Um, and so that's been a lot of like, I'm, I'm sure making you help. meals. I'm sure yeah, you I, help some. No, yeah, yeah. Right now I'm like, uh, um, I, it almost feels like more work than what I previously was doing. So right. I work part time and, uh, and then I come home and make lunches or dinners um, and uh, do all the stuff, the laundry and, and, and delegate kids and uh, wh- what they need to do. And so yeah, all that's happening. Kids at homeschool. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of, she's waiting to, uh, I think she's looking at starting that in the next week okay. um, as she's getting better. So that, that's been so a little kid, bit delayed. I'm sure the kids weren't too mad oh, about yeah, that. Push yeah, yeah, school yeah, back yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's kind of where we're at um, at home. It's, it's been, um, it's been busy. Yeah. I thought it would be like less busy, but it's been, it's been way more busy yeah. um, doing the different things. It's, it's super busy where I work right now, but that will, uh, I'll be done with that. Um, before the end of the year, um, we'll be uh, transitioning to a full time. Um, so language okay. learning, yeah. reading books, going to some. We have some weeks of, of training that we have to do in Pennsylvania yep. through ABWE, um, and then meeting with people and churches and things like that. So that's kind of what we're. Uh, that's what I'm up to right now. Okay, so it's a, a full schedule. Sounds it like is. for this fall. But you guys cannot move, correct, until you're at 100%. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we need like month, it's the monthly, it's a monthly. piece. Uh, monthly supporters is, is kind of what we have left to, um, 
take care of. We, we feel comfortable that by the middle of the year, all of the other things will be in place, mm-hmm. uh, all of the other requirements. Amanda's knee surgery is one of those things that we had to get done yeah. before we moved. Um, all the other requirements will get done, all our trainings and our books. And, of course, language learning is a, a much longer process, yes. but um, we'll have been started on that. So so you mentioned language learning. Uh, are you going to be learning multiple languages? Yes. Okay, so can you tell us those? Yeah, so Mahdi is – so okay. for those of the people in the mountains okay. – um, and you will find that very few people there speak English at all. Okay. Even though Uganda is um, an English-speaking country, um, the people in, in that area, um, when I was there, you might get like a hello mm. um, and maybe their name. So yeah. um, we need to learn Mahdi. Okay. And then the Oringa people uh, primarily speak Oringa. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find some people who will speak some English. So you can get by a little bit yeah. in that area. Um, but Jacob takes translators to both okay. um, because um, he, um, when he got there, he, I think maybe he thought like, well, maybe I won't be here like as long as he was, you know, he just, you don't know. And so he's used translators. And um, so those two languages for sure. Do those overlap at all or are they completely different? I I don't know because <laughs> okay. I don't know enough about them. <laughs> okay. um, all right. I, so you get to find out. I don't get the sense that they overlap, but <laughs> okay. um then uh, um, I think once we get those two languages, I think there would be value in learning Arabic. So the mm. Sudanese refugees come. Okay. Ar- Arabic is what is spoken as a as the general language. They they do speak their own tribal languages, um, but that would probably be very difficult to. Mm. to I mean, three oh, three yeah. seems like a lot. So <laughs> that um, is a lot. Especially you, know, you get older. That's three more than I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get older, too, they say. It's harder to learn So oh, well, languages. Yeah. So my kids will probably be like, oh, you sure. Know, yeah. Kids rattling it off. On. But yeah. Okay. Well, so a lot to think about, a lot to, to pray about for you guys. But before we kind of get into how we can pray for you all, just share with us with this what, what's God been teaching you throughout this whole process of raising support? with prayer support, financial support. Um, Again, um, you know, you first had this in your heart pre-COVID, right? And so it's it's been a long process. So what's God been teaching you throughout all this? Uh, Patience. Um, (laughs) Which is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. So that's Uh, good. And and not that that I didn't know it, but um, just more reminders of that, that God is in control. Yeah. Nothing has gone the way you would think it would go. Yeah. Um, or that we specifically might have planned in our yeah, minds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but but he's he's working all things out. And, and if you've been a Christian long enough, you have – you can look back at your life mm. and multiple times you could – oh, I know why he did that. Yeah. I know why that had to wait. I know why this had to happen. And so that's – that's what's kind of happened for us. We've we've seen kind of like diversions and roadblocks and different things along the way. And, and yeah. you, in the midst of it, you're you you kind of like what's going on? Sure. You know, you maybe even second guess like am am I in the am I going down the right path or what's going on yeah. here? Um, but if you've if you've been again if you've been a Christian long yeah. enough, um, you can remember all the times that God has done that before, and you can just trust Him. Yeah. That He's going to do the right thing in the right time. And, and you just keep walking as, as, as God leads you. Um, serve where you're at. So it's important not to think that like, oh, there's this destination. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'll do what God wants me to do once I get there. Yeah. Um, so f- right. like if for you're us, not doing it now, yeah. why do you think you're going to do it there? Yeah, or I think, do a good job while you're right, there? Right, right. I, I might be attributing this to the wrong person. I think Brooks Buser talks about like um, that there's no such thing as like, sanctification uh, via relocation or so, aviation i think it was <laughs> yeah by like flying somewhere yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so you don't yeah. it's like oh i'm not this way but if i move there i'll be that yeah. way so um <laughs> it means that uh it's it's important for us to be serving the church here yeah it's it's important for us to be evangelizing here um and god's given me uh, great opportunities at work to do that yeah um, and your family is a great example of of serving where you guys are at you guys are all involved. You're serving here at the church, and you're trying to be a witness at your work and other places that you guys are go to. So that's, yeah. that's wonderful. 
So yeah. God's going to stretch us some more. Yeah. He's going to He's going to put us in difficult situations. But I know in the end, uh, and there'll be plenty more. Like, what are you What are you doing? I don't really know what you're doing here, God. Um, what, this isn't working like we thought it would. Yeah. But I know at the end of it, um, it will be for my good and His glory. And so yeah. we just we just trust Him in that. So that's kind of been. Um, I mean, what we've been reminded of and learned through this process, um, and and it has been um, humbling. Uh, to see people um, support us and ask about us, pray for us. Mm. Um, all of that's been um, hard. I'm like not a good receiver. Mm. and um, uh, But it's cool to see like God has put it on the heart of the right people. And it's, and it's a way God blesses them and blesses us and then blesses the people we will one day go to. And all of those people in the process will in turn praise God for what he's done. And so it's it's a really amazing thing that God yeah. does where everyone involved um, ultimately glorifies God. And, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, I think you've shared that God has provided for you guys in ways that you didn't think he would or yeah. through, through different people, through different yeah. means. And uh, yeah, so that's... It's always cool to, to, to see and because you just don't know what God's gonna do and He surprises us in ways and and it's it's just great to to be a part of that process when we're we're leaning on God we're relying on Him we're we're stepping out in faith and doing hard things so that's good man uh, if people want to give to you guys your ministry whether that's a one time gift or a monthly um, gift how can they do that how should they go about uh, doing that um, well we might be able to put a QR code up. Uh, may might pop up here magically okay. or a website uh, or something and, and, we'll get and then something. you could do and then uh, or a website um, and so you could go there and um, you could also just talk to the church um, if you're if you're a member here at Edgewood um, if you uh, talked with us um, talked to any of the pastors um, that would be a connection point um, if you don't have a prayer card already um, we'd love to give you one and so that you could stick it up we have like a whole wall of prayer cards next to our fridge because it's a place that we frequent. And, um, and so it's a great place to, to see those people who are um, on mission somewhere and, mm -hmm. and lift up prayers to God for, um, for what they're doing and for the people they're serving and trying to reach. And so uh, if you don't have one of our prayer cards, uh, grab one, stick it up somewhere. That'll be a reminder. Oh. We would be much appreciated. Um, prayer is... Is um, it sounds maybe cliched, but it really is so so important. Yeah, I was just listening to the biography of John Patton and the mm. prayer life of his dad, and um, praying for his son, and then his son um, being called, and the people praying for him when he went to a very difficult place full of cannibals, and yeah. and how God um, spared his life and won so many people to Christ. Um, but prayer was the foundation for, for all of that, God working through those people um, to do what he does. And yeah. so it's a good word. Speaking of prayer, how can we pray for you guys um, specifically in these next couple months, especially with, with some things changing and you guys kind of getting closer to your goal? Um, you can pray for my wife's recovery because um, as soon as she's better, then I won't have to do all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, You're wearing multiple yeah, hats, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so pray for her recovery. Um, pray that I can balance time well. Um, there is a lot of a lot of things that pull. Yeah. You know, uh, work would like to have me more than they do. Yeah. Um, and um, I have I've got ABWE stuff to do. Um, that um, that God would prepare the the kids. Yep. Um, because there's a lot of change. There's a, you know, food is different and people are different. And mm -hmm. and so um, that he would um, prepare their hearts um, and uh, pray for my younger ones that they um, would come to know him. Um, I'm thankful that um, Elijah does. And um, he'll be, I know God will work in his heart mm. um, while in preparation to go and then while he's there. Um, pray that the same would be true ultimately of all my three younger ones. Yeah. Um, pray for uh, the finances to go. I um, 
and that we would just continue to trust God's timing. Um, that's uh, like so those big ones. Okay. Well, can I pray for you now? Yeah, sure. Can. Let's do it. God, thanks so much for this time with Aaron and just uh, get an update from him about this mission that you have them on. Lord, they're still preparing to go, um, but God, you're opening doors and um, they're getting closer to that goal of, of being able to go. And I know their hearts are there. They want to go. Um, Lord, we pray that you continue to provide for them financially and um, with, with more prayer support and financial uh, partners. God, we pray that you would um, uh, bring more people um, to um, uh, to their aid in the, in the sense of uh, providing for them. Lord, that's what the body of Christ does, and so that we can send people out, we can be involved in that process of, of going and sending. So, Lord, we pray that you'd provide for them. Pray that you be with Amanda in her recovery, and um, you, I, I just pray that, um, Lord, you'd uh, heal her leg uh, quickly, Lord, in the uh, different therapies she's getting uh, for that. Lord, just be effective, and uh, you'd help her to, to, to grow strong. And, Lord, uh, just kind of help Aaron to just be able to continue uh, to, to be strong in your mighty power as he's juggling different things at home and at work, and you just give him uh, patience and perseverance in that regard as well. We pray that it be with their, their youngest uh, children that they would come to the saving knowledge of, of you, they put their faith and trust in you, God, and you prepare them as they get ready to go, Lord. We know it's all in your good timing, uh, but we pray that they would be able to go soon as you lay this uh, burden on their hearts. And um, God's a long road ahead, but we know you're in charge and you're in control. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Um, well, thanks so much for, for sharing and being on here today. Again, um, you can get a prayer card for Aaron. Tell us the website just for those that are just listening on the audio. How okay. can they find you guys? If they go to ABWE. ABWE.org slash life in Uganda. Okay. Good. Um, That'll help. You can just Google Aaron Langworthy and ABWE and it would probably that should pop, pop up, up too. Okay. Yep. Good. Just want to make sure people have that because some people just do the audio. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully the video will be out in a couple days and people can uh, see that uh, website and, and go there and hopefully maybe even get their supporters um, from this. Uh, but thank you all so much for tuning in, joining us on the Edgewood 4G podcast. I want to thank Aaron once again. And um, it's been a joy to just uh, partner with them and um, going with the gospel. And we're looking forward to what God's going to be doing in their, life, in their lives in the days ahead. Uh, Thank you for uh, tuning in. If you are watching this, uh, share this with other people. I want to get the word out to more people so that uh, you can see what God is doing here at Edgewood and with uh, sending different people to the ends of the earth. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, you can also share this. You can leave us a rating and review. We want to get these out to more people. Uh, but I want to thank you for tuning in to the Edgewood 4G podcast, and we will see you next time.